So this 35 marker um, is or was one of the options in 2021. So discuss the view. Tells me it's a debate. That divorce rates have changed as a result of changes to divorce laws in the contemporary UK. Okay, so it's a debate. So I'm going to do three paragraphs, four if I can, three paragraphs against, three and three each side. Now this side is arguing then that divorce laws, basically the Divorce Reform Act, but divorce laws have changed divorce rates. Or led to an increase that it's divorce rates sorry divorce laws that have changed the divorce rates that have led to an increase against is going to be that there are other factors that have caused divorce rates so this side is, is other factors um, that have uh, created an increase. There's other factors that have created an increase in divorce. So, in divorce. Okay, so this side, I'm going to go to the kind of divorce section of the spec and I'm going to here, I'm going to argue that um, divorce rates have changed as a result of the Divorce Reform Act in 1969. Divorces went from 57,000, I think it's 58, sorry, round up, 58,000 to 119,000 and it introduced no fault divorce. So you can cite ir irreconcilable differences for a divorce. And with that, I'm gonna put Hart, who found that part of the reason for the increase in divorce rates is um, increased opportunities to escape, namely divorce or changes in divorce legislation. Combined with increased conflict, she argues it's divorce legislation that's largely had a change in those divorce rates, combined with increased conflict and changing values. I'm going to touch on the other two, but dominantly going to try and focus on divorce there. So I plan the rest of the essay, but I can't find any other studies to put in there for the moment uh, or at all by the time I finished it. So this shows that divorce rates have increased as a result of legislation, result of divorce, result of divorce laws, I use that language. So if rates have increased as a result, divorce rates have increased as a result of divorce laws. As people now have the opportunity to leave, People now have the opportunity to leave as a result of legislative changes. Legislative changes that have made it easier. So we're saying, yeah, it is the divorce legislation because those are the changes that have mean that people can actually leave because of the 1960 Divorce Reform Act. However, Hart 
notes that it is not only legislation it's not only legislation but also that relationships have increased conflict now and key changes in our values are also reasons for divorce rates changing. You could note in the introduction here that 47% of marriages end in divorce. It's a nice one to put in an introduction. And then again, highlight that that may be the result of legislation making it much more easier to obtain, or so it can be legislation making it easier to obtain, or a decline in stigma. Higher expectations. And women having more economic freedom. So basically they work and therefore are less likely to be trapped. We dominantly focus on women because statistically women are the ones who are much more likely than men. So we're going very heteronormative, but women much more than men are more likely to file for divorce. So we do generally focus on women and what they're do doing. Um, so that's really kind of what I'd note in an introduction. We're going to argue that it has made it much easier to obtain a divorce, but it might be that decline in stigma, women working and um, yeah, higher expectations, because those are going to be my three paragraphs against. Okay, so paragraph again, so we're going to argue it's not um, divorce laws that have changed divorce rates, but higher expectations And actually, all relationships now are very fragile. So what I'm trying to infer here is, is that it's not just the divorce legislations that is why people want to get divorced. We don't get divorced because we can. We get divorced because the expectations of what we wanted in that partnership have not been met. So it's not divorce laws that have changed divorce rates, but higher expectations is the reason for those much higher rates of divorce now. Okay, so we're going to do Giddens. Good old Giddens. Oops. And confluent love. Pure relationship. I'm just going to shorthand this one. We're going to do good here who argues that we're less likely to put up with loveless marriages we're less likely to put up with loveless marriages but we are doing smaller and smaller input into the quality and stability. Got Giddens are confluent pure relationships, so we seek those key things and we seek emotional intimacy. But increasingly women find that men aren't socialized to provide emotional intimacy. Um, and therefore, again, those expectations aren't being met. 
withdrew. Marriage is now a matter of choice. And again, expectations aren't met. We leave. So we're going to do those three. This shows. So this shows that it's not divorce laws. It's not divorce laws. That have changed rates of divorce. It's not divorce laws that have changed the rates of divorce, but having higher expectations in contemporary society. But it's having higher expectations in contemporary society that means that divorce is an option if these standards are not met. It's not the legislation, it's the fact that our standards aren't being met of what we expect and therefore we walk away or we leave. However, Divorce rates in recent years have fallen. And are actually decreasing. Divorce rates in recent years have fallen and are actually decreasing. This does suggest that divorce rates will suggest that previous rates of divorce being higher may be the result of legislative changes. So if you were going to look at a pie chart of divorce rates, you'd see them steadily go increasing. Um, and then in the kind of 2000s, after kind of 2005, you start to see them drop off. I mean, that's largely because people aren't getting married as much. But generally, we could argue that if the rates of divorce are actually falling, that would suggest that previous higher rates of divorce may be the result of legislation, which is what the question obviously is asking me. I'm going to go back for the question. This gets quite tricky now. So when I go back for the question, I'm going to argue that it is divorce legislation. It is divorce legislation or divorce laws that have changed. Divorce legislation or divorce laws that have changed rates of divorce. So here we're going to do Smart and Neil. that divorce offers women a chance to redefine relationships and find less oppressive partnerships. It finds women the opportunity to find less oppressive relationships and redefine relationships. For Fletcher, argues that we expect more from companionship and marriage. And again, it's kind of a similar theme, but those who fail to meet or achieve those expectations 
those who fail to meet or achieve those expectations. I mean the individuals will obtain a divorce and start again. And I've only got two there because I used the rest of them um, in this paragraph. Okay, so this shows, I'm going to try and link this into the question now. Oops. So this shows that divorce rates are the result. of divorce, divorce rates are the result of divorce laws, as it's only possible to obtain, only possible to obtain a divorce. if legislation has made it accessible. So it's only possible to obtain a divorce if legislation has made it accessible. So divorce rates are the result of divorce laws. It's only possible to obtain a divorce if legislation has made it accessible or an option to legally dissolve the marriage. So what I'm trying to argue here is, yeah, there's higher expectations, which I appreciate was in this paragraph, but those higher expectations where women can redefine the relationships and those, again, expectations aren't met. It's only possible to legally dissolve the marriage if it's possible to do so in legislation. So yeah, you can't have one without the other. However, new right theorists like Palmer and Phillips argue there is no discussion about the impacts of these changes in divorce on family relationships and children. You could do dens in there or Murray. But yeah, however, new right thinkers argue that there's no discussion at all about the impacts of these changes of divorce on family relationships and children and society more generally. So again, it's a real struggle to evaluate because those changes have happened, <laughs> whether it be divorce legislation or higher expectations, it's a real struggle. And um, if I'm ever I'm really desperate, I kind of use new right, which will probably see the pattern developing. Okay, so we're going to go back again. So it's not divorce reform or legislation that's changed those divorce rates, it's decline in stigma. So I'm going to do Beck that we can now make a range of, um, or the focus sorry, is on individualism and choice. Now, um, and there's a departure from social expectations. We can now make a range of decisions Um, largely again due to that decline in stigma. Uh, Chandler's going to go with him that women now are less dependent on men. And we can now remain single 
in ways that were not appropriate. in the past. So we've now got individualism and choice. The Tanas we can now um, women are less dependent on men. We can now remain singles in ways that weren't considered appropriate in the past. Again we're trying to link that more to stigma where possible. And for Morgan favours the term family practices rather than family to acknowledge all the diversity and freedom. Okay, so this shows that divorce rates have changed not as a result of legislation, but as a result of declining stigma that has given people the freedom to divorce and have new family types like single mothers by choice. Or blended. So it's not divorce legislation, it's ultimately the decline in stigma that's had the biggest impact. We can now have the freedom to make those choices to leave a divorce or um, an unhappy marriage and have these new family types. However, for Crow, the amount of change is overstated. However, for Crow, the amount of change is being overstated here. Ultimately, people separated in the past, but never divorced. I'm kind of making that fit here, by the way. He just is about changes being overstated. But I'm going to add to him and make the point that largely people separated in the past, but never divorced and just lived separate lives. And people were just unaware generally. However, oh, no, I've done my however. Perfect. Right. I don't have anything left this side. Um, it's really uneven. Um, so, yeah, I don't have any other bits of divorce legislation. If you have some you think of, please let me know. And we can obviously add it in. I had a good search, but I, yeah struggled. So I'm going to go this side and argue that uh, changes in divorce rates are the result of um, changes in the divorce rates are the re result of women having more economic independence and therefore more freedom to escape. So here I'm going to do Wilkinson. So the gender quake, feminization of work. I'm also going to do flower and can in there that marriage is no longer economically necessary for women and Lambert the rise of fit women women who are financially independent in their 20s and 30s and what I'm going to argue is that if you've had a career in your 20s and 30s and earned a good standard of living, um, you don't need to stay in that marriage um, if you're unhappy. We don't need to. We don't need men in order to be economically 
viable now as women anymore and that wasn't true of um, the sisters before us so this shows that high divorce rates so let's just check the question this shows high divorce rates have changed as a result of women working it changes as a result of women working and not just due to divorce laws as women can now leave and again aren't trapped due to financial constraints so because we're now in work we can leave if we're unhappy we're not tethered to somebody else however i'm gonna add a little bit of feminism in the second year however for beachy where women are semi proletarianized It does leave women vulnerable, both in employment and families. Basically, there's still an issue of financial abuse. So if you work significantly part-time hours and ultimately you wouldn't be able to pay rent in bills by yourself, that does really leave you trapped and if you're seeking a divorce and you don't have access to the you know joint account now or somebody's your male partner has moved all of that money away how are you going to pay for a really good solicitor so although we're trying to argue that you know women are now more free we still have limitations there okay so then to conclude it um easy to put the conclusion up here so I've done the little mini introduction but to conclude it I would argue that um, so divorce rates have changed but largely remain high so although they're coming down they're still quite high they largely remain high and the fact that 60% of divorces are obtained by women highlights that shifts in wider society, like higher expectations and women working have impacted on divorce rates. However, to absolve a marriage or dissolve, absolve, <laughs> to dissolve a marriage, you have to legally obtain a divorce and separate. Therefore, and therefore, these laws undoubtedly combined with stigma they will combine with decline in stigma have changed the rates it's a mixture not one key factor So that is my attempt at this uh, 2021 uh, question. If you do think of anything else, please let me know. Um, yeah, and obviously I'll be happy to discuss, but that's my attempt at this very, very, very tricky question. <laughs>